So you finally finished working on your picture. Now you want to display it. And uh, when I say display, I mean you know, framework, border, stroke line, that sort of thing. But there was an effect that I've come across. I've noticed it on the bottom of several websites. And I've even been receiving emails from one of the stock agencies. I wonder if I mention them, if they give me free pass. There's a thought. Doubt it. But, uh, you know, it's... It looks as if it's a photograph which has been dropped in on top of the email or the bottom of the web page is just bent up and lifted slightly. Really like that effect. So I thought we'd take a look at using this image here. And I've got some woods planks there, which I've uh, got from my favorite sort of background, my favorite texture website. You can see it now listed on the screen. Uh, you can also Google textures Photoshop and it's amazing some of the textures you will come up with or perhaps you've even got a texture, perhaps you've even got a picture of your own that you can use. Right, enough of the waffle. Let's get on with it. We're going to come to my image here. I've got the hand tool selected. We need to change this for the move tool. Just press V on the keyboard. Pressing V on the keyboard takes you straight to the move tool clicking down we're going to lift it up we're taking it over the tab when we reach the tab you'll notice the way it changes got the black arrow head I'm going to press shift on the keyboard the reason for pressing shift is it will place our image directly in the center so the spacing between both sides and the top and bottom are going to be equal Next, with the Move tool selected, I'm just going to nudge it up slightly. And I say nudge it up because you can use the arrows. So I'm using the up arrow and I'm just going to nudge it up. You see it goes up pixel at a time. Press Shift on the keyboard. It jumps up a bit further. That's looking pretty good. Something like that there. The next stage is to apply a drop shadow. Now we can drop down. We can come to the effects icon. The effects icon is going to take us. It's going to add a layer style or another way we can do it is by simply double clicking on the thumbnail that takes us to layer style now drop down to where it says drop shadow if we just click on this this is now highlighted in blue you'll notice the way this is all changed now this will vary depending if you're doing it for print you may need to adjust these figures I'm doing it in sort of like a web size so taking the size up you'll notice the way as I'm beginning to bring it up so you can see that uh, shadow effect coming out over the edge. For this particular one, I'm going to drop it back. I'm going to take it to about 10 pixels. I think it'll be fine. If you're using it for print, you may have to take this up higher around about the 15, 20 pixels, but just experiment. You just want it to come slightly over the edge. What we're doing is we're very, very slightly feathering it. Okay, click OK. <laughs> it's now that we've done that. We need to create a drop shadow but we need to put it on its own layer this is very simple to do all we need to do is come down to where it says effects right click now dropping down going to create layer we get a little bit of a warning telling us there's some aspects of layer styles that can't be reproduced with a layer but the drop shadow is fine so just click OK to that and there it is there is our drop shadow on its own layer you'll notice it's there at 75% opacity Right, let's just come down. I'm going to click on this layer. Take a look over on the toolbox. You'll notice the colors are red as a foreground, white as a background. I'm going to leave that as it is, but I'm going to drop down. I'm going to put in a layer mask. As I put in the layer mask, watch what happens to the colors. They've now changed to black and white, the default for the mask. If I just bring my cursor over and click on the image part, the thumbnail, it goes back to being red and white. So just make sure we're working on the mask. We're now going to come over. I'm going to click on the gradient tool. We're going to come up. Make sure you've got the linear gradient. That's the first one in there. Clicking in the window for your gradient editor. You need the preset of foreground to transparent. That's foreground to transparent. You can see there it is the black through to the checkerboard. That's the one you want. Click OK to that. Right, bring your cursor to the edge of your drop shadow. Click down, now press shift. Why are you pressing down shift? I hear you say, well, release shift and you get a bit of a wonky line. Press shift and you get a perfectly horizontal line. I'm going to bring it into that sort of area, releasing it. Through it goes, looking pretty good. Coming over to the other side, clicking down once again on the edge of the drop shadow. Once again, pressing down that shift key, bringing it into the round about this area, releasing it. Through it goes, looking pretty good. Right switching on our layer one. I'm going to drop down and I'm going to come to our shadow, making sure though that we're actually working on the shadow. So that framework that's around the mask is now around the thumbnail itself. Now with this, we're going to come to edit. We're going to drop down to 
free transform that's command T or control T but just take a look if we come down to transforming or transform should I say you've got warp perspective and uh, you've got everything you want so using command T control T that puts the transform tool around they're just gonna reverse out a little bit so we can see this bring my cursor inside you'll notice the way it changes to the black arrow head and if I right click there's that same menu warp is the one we're after You'll notice you get that rule of thirds type grid there, but it's the grab handle, this bottom one here, I'm going to click on, I'm going to pull it down. You'll notice the way that that shadow is now coming out from the bottom. I'm going to pull it in a little bit as well, doing exactly the same. So pulling it down and then pulling it in like this. It's now giving the impression that the picture is beginning to curl up. If I press enter or return, that'll apply it. Now using command zero, control zero, it goes to fit on screen so we can see everything and that's looking pretty good. To make the picture look a little bit more like a photograph, I'm going to come up, we're going to click on layer one. So the framework is now around layer one. I'm going to double click again. This is going to take us to layer styles. I'm going to click on the stroke. Now with stroke, this is the default. It's uh, one pixel outside and it's black. So what does all this mean? If I just bring this out, you'll notice it's coming out around the edge. That is position outside. If we change this to inside, you'll notice the way it's now sharpened up. That's looking much better. But I'm not sure I like black, so we're going to change this to white. So just click in the little window. That opens the color picker. You can have whatever color you want, but I'm going to go for white and you can click OK to that. Now, if these are the figures that you use a lot, just click make default. The next time you open it, it'll go straight to these figures. I'm going to take this up just a, a little bit more. It's going to take it to around about the 18 pixels. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to click OK to that. So there it is. It's now looking like a photograph that's been tossed down. And you can see the edges just curling up there. Really like the way that drop shadow is working. Folding this up out of the way, I'm going to now drop my cursor down, pressing Command or Control, clicking down on the layer. Both are highlighted. If I bring my cursor out, I'm going to press V. Don't forget V was the shortcut we used to give us the Move tool. We can now come in, we can move these anywhere around, or you can use Command T, Control T. That puts the Transform tool around. And if I just bring my cursor up, let's pop that in out of the way. We can now give it a little bit of a rotation. We can now move it up a little bit like this. And if we just double click, that's applied it. And there you are. With this background, perhaps I'd like to just darken it down a little bit to finish it off. So I'm just going to use Command J, Control J. That's now duplicated our background layer. We can now come and we can change the blend mode to multiply darkened it down some lovely colors textures coming through there you can still see that drop shadow but we can also reduce the opacity down into that area and there it is it's just a great way to display your pictures it just makes it a little bit different and it just helps the image to stand out i really like that effect so go on give it a try until the next time it's happy imaging and take care